Good morning. Oh, good morning. Hello. How's your mate? How's your mate? Hello, Bon. Hello, darling. Oh, good girl. Hello, puppet. Kisses. Let's put a cap on because my hair is not being the dream. I am taking Ember just to Justine's because next week, guys, we've got our first um, event. Hooray! It's an unaffiliated 80. So I'm going to Justine's today to go through my dressage because it is something that I need to do. And I have a new dressage bridle. Um, ow. A new dressage bri bridle that GS Equestrian have sent me. It's a Micklum. And uh, that, along with my new bit from Expert Bits, I'm hoping is going to be the key to our success in the dressage arena. So Rob is currently hitching up the trailer. And Ember, hello, it's a good boy. Ember has been a superstar um, this past week. Uh, he's been on an adventure with GS Equestrian, a yeah, big, big old hint on his bum. And we went to film the very first episode of our new series, uh, which is coming to Horse and Country TV. Uh, it's Lucy Robinson, Road to Blenheim. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Wow, Lucy, you're aiming for four star. No, I'm aiming to do the Eventer, uh, the Eventer challenge there, the arena eventing. So, yeah, so we filmed the first episode, which is at Aston. I didn't vlog it. Um, but I will pop in a little clip of him being a freaking legend because he jumped his first 100 fence. Good. So now I've got to get him ready and then when I come back, I'm going to give you an update on these two. Bonnie and Lara, who's bored of my chat, um, and we'll let you know what has been going on with them in terms of their multiple and various visits to the vets. Did you just cut yourself? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I was going to say, whilst Rob opens my bridle up very carefully with his knife, because he didn't trust me to do it, you just literally stabbed yourself. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Thank you for doing that. Do you need a plaster? No, where's the sheath? The sheath. Do you know what sheath means? For yeah. horses. It's like the willy pouch. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we learn something new every day. So, um, I'm just putting my bridle together. I had a bit fitter out for Ember, and we found another bit for... Um, his flat work. Um, so this is the Expert Bits Comfy Barrel um, with the egg butt. Reasoning behind the bed, egg butt was to give him more stability um, in the in the in the mouth, basically. So he's been going quite sweetly in this, and I jumped him in the Comfy Barrel with loops. Um, so it's an egg butt and then it had the loopy bits, which she's been going really well in and um, even at the arena cross country. <laughs> my dressage test which I so I'm doing an 80 unaffiliated basically um, so I think it's a B90 test but I can't remember which one at this stage so I'll have to look it up. Lucy's come for a dressage lesson but she does appear to be well let's put it this way I think she got out of the wrong side of bed. <laughs> hey it's been a lovely sunny day this morning I'm absolutely fine. That's good okay that's good. Just I don't, yeah, I am a bit aggy. I don't know what. Yes, <laughs> yes, see? Well, anyway, I'm not going to let it... Um, Interfere do... with your dressage no, lesson. Exactly. No, exactly. I'm doing, and for the purpose of this video, everybody, yep. I'm doing 
BE90 Test 95 2012, which is in a 20 by 40 arena. That's it, that's what you look like. <laughs> Good boy. So in terms of a walk, that's a nice walk. Yeah. And then when you're ready, trot. And again, we're just going to make sure he's really long, low, and he stays as soft and long and low as possible into the transition. So think about, that's it. Good. Good boy, that's it. And yes, he's, a, you know, he's a bit overbent, but we want him to really let go of that neck. Yeah? I don't know. Good boy. Really think about overbending and over loosening him through the change of bend. So don't give him, don't allow him to come up and block against you, yeah? Just by asking, really exaggerating the amount of bend you have when you change directions. That's it, there. Can you feel him soften when he's there? I know he's... Good boy. That's better, Lucia. Yeah? When he lets go, we want him to know that he's letting go two-way contact. So take the arm with him and keep the rein very even, that connection very even. And be ready to, when he goes, takes it down, take that whole arm with him. Good, there, yeah? Good. Good boy, exaggerate. If you're going to, so this next time we'll change the rein. As you start turning, so do a little half circle there. Now start thinking about your left bend, left bend. Good, left bend, good, yeah? Well done, that was better. Ten foot A, down ten fly, pack left. Think about over, over softening, over bend a little bit. So we work him long and low throughout the test. Good boy. And start thinking about your right bend now. Soften the left arm. That's it. Soften the left arm. Good. What are you doing, serpentine? No, just a ten, uh, two, two half circles. Okay, good, good, good. That's it. And still arm. Still even contact. Legs just by the side. Yeah? Good, good. Where are we going now? Half circles, sorry. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. Think about the bends. Think about very still, even hand. Riding with your seat, let him come through. Hey presto, we are done. And you're a very good boy. I'm feeling a bit, I ate too much brunch. <laughs> Probably a bit too much before I came to ride. So um, I'm feeling a bit, <sighs> I'm feeling a bit lethargic. So um, Ember did quite well to put up with me, didn't you? So we're gonna untack him. I do like this bridle. Um, I think I need to give it a good oil just to break the leather in a little bit. So it fits a bit better, but yeah. Good fit. Should we go back on the trailer? Ember? Do you want to come back on? Yeah? I think so, my 
darling. Right, so we're back from Justine's and I've just taken Lara out. Um, I've got her on the end of the lead rope. Two lead ropes, in fact, because um, I don't want her to run away because she hasn't actually had a hand graze for a very long time because obviously she's on box rest for a little catch up. Last month, beginning of February, uh, Lara sustained an injury um, out hunting um, after jumping a hedge and she landed and she was lame. <laughs> so and the vets has basically concluded that she has very successfully damaged her check ligament, haven't you? Yes. Um, and she's also strained her deep digital flex tendon. But the extent of that is not wasn't quite determined with the scan, so I had to wait for the scans, which is why I haven't updated you. But she has been um, undergoing a course of laser therapy. Lucky girl. Um, she will be off all summer. She will be turned out now. Um, when we have another, I think we have another scan from the vet to assess how well this has healed, um, which hopefully. I mean, it's feeling a lot better and looking a lot better, so I'm, I'm pretty pretty optimistic about that one. Um, and then hopefully a nice summer off and we can reassess um, how it's looking. And then, yeah, but we'll see. The future is not totally clear yet in terms of her career. Um, it might be... Well, I'm definitely prepared that I'm not going to be able to jump her again. In terms of jumping, I don't mind, but I really would like to be able to hunt her again. But we'll see. If it's not possible, then it's not possible. And she's going to have to enjoy a life of hacking. I mean, she's older now, guys. She's 18. Um, don't get me wrong, that is not old for a horse. And many horses, obviously, are still eventing at five star when they're 18. But um, I think with her, just how she is and her personality she's a very headstrong mare and um, if she wants to go she will go and it doesn't matter really how much you don't really have much say basically so the self-preservation is what I'm trying to say is not there so we shall see anyway so that's the Lara update come on come on let's go for a leg stretch we're gonna go for a little hand graze aren't we no we're not we're gonna let you go in the field because that's what because you're not actually lame no you're not you have been to the vets too. So for those of you who follow me on my Instagram may know that my pony, Bonnie, who is a uh, Welsh, Welsh mountain pony, she's a section A uh, and she is five. <laughs> I've been saying for years that she's three. Uh, I got her when she was 10 months old <laughs> and she just I always thought she was three. Didn't realize quite how much um, she'd, she'd aged, hey. Kind of miscalculated that bond, didn't I? Yeah. Anyway, so um, so Bonnie has also been in the vets recently, guys, and um, that is a whole another kettle of fish. Okay, so I've got Lara in here. Hello. For your next round of laser, haven't I? Yes. Uh, so she's come to the vets, and I've also come to pick up Bonnie, who is in here. Hello, you're gonna come home in a minute. Yeah? You're gonna come home in a minute. Uh huh, why are you not focusing? There we go. I'm coming to take you home. Yes, I have. And we'll explain everything. <laughs> That's not helpful, is it? <laughs> we good? Yes. So Bonnie has been on um, box rest as a companion with Lara, which actually hasn't been <laughs> so much of a bad thing. Oh, she's so fresh um, in terms of her weight, because obviously, I mean, this is a very lovely display, Bon, isn't it? She'll settle down in a minute. She just has a little funny five minutes of funky dancing don't you yes so yeah so she's been off the grass for a while which is great because she is actually the perfect weight at the moment which makes her super speedy 
super speedy. I don't want another vet bill. Oh, she loves doing that. <sighs> Come on, steady now. Oh my God, she's so naughty. <laughs> um, yeah, so when I last weighed her, she was 213 kilos, which for a pony of her size is perfect. Come on, just settle and have some, have a little peck. You know you want one. She says, I also want to run around and run into you and then kick out, because that's fun. Right, okay, as I was saying, whilst Bonnie has now calmed down in <laughs> the background. Um, so last year, um, I noticed that Bonnie had a bit of an abscess looking thing in her face, like on her jawline. And um, it went a bit manky as abscesses or as I thought it was at the time does um, and I noticed because it was a bit pussy and gross anyway got the vet out obviously and um, they cleaned it up but what well, it didn't look like an abscess because when you when we got all of the infection pus out um, still very much like a big lump of like what looked like soft tissue and that's exactly what it was because Bonnie had are you okay? Yeah? Yeah, she's just an awesome way. Bonnie had a, um, basically a tooth infection. So um, that's what we established what it was, a tooth infection. So we, we, um, I was advised to get an x-ray. So I got an x-ray and what transpired is that the tooth had, um, the tooth root had not formed properly and um, it had become infected somehow. Anyway, so the vet was like, look, it might settle down, um, so just leave it. Obviously, at that time last year, her teeth were still very much, I don't think they'd stopped forming, developing yet. So um, she was like, the vet said, keep an eye on it and we will assess. And it might be that it doesn't, the abscess infection thing doesn't come back up again and it can be fine and we can leave it that didn't happen <laughs> um i assessed it and all through the summer it was fine like there was no dramas and then this winter it flared up again and i took her for some more x-rays and the vet had said that the teeth had stopped forming but they could see that the tooth in question was still obviously causing a problem so the best thing to do was to take it out now um I will say that at this stage I was quite worried um, and the vet was a bit concerned because of the extent of the tooth infection. They didn't know if that had weakened the tooth and obviously when you're pulling a huge tooth out of a tiny pony face, um, if it's weakened, you have to use a lot of strength. And if it's weakened, there is a, quite a risk that that tooth will fracture um, and then that is basically very 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 expensive there's only one thing to do we have to give it a go so she went into the vets and um, luckily the tooth extraction was a success yay and they took it out yeah poor girl poor girl poor girl You've been through it a bit today, haven't you? Hey? Hey? She says, I'm awake now, Mum. I need to go home. Um, and she had been on Butte and antibiotics to hope there was no infection. And luckily, it's everything, everything's been completely fine and the whole site is healing very well. Um, and she went back to the vets to get the swab taken out and they looked at it and um, they said that the the area was very clean and um, yeah, they were very happy. Right guys, this is her tooth here and this is the interesting part which I want to tell you about. Disclaimer, <laughs> that's the one. Um, I am not a vet obviously or an equine dentist, equine dentist, <laughs> but I'm trying to regurgitate as much as I can what the vet said. There's like a chip here, see this little bit? And this, which goes all the way down there, went basically in her jaw, like 
made a lump and went all the way down, like here, and that, oh, it's quite big, isn't it? And that, uh, also quite rank that I'm putting that on my face. That <laughs> is where the infection was coming out of that little tract. So that's really fun and really disgusting, but it's so fascinating. Like, look how massive that is. That is such a big tooth. She had a specialist from Newmarket come down and do the actual procedure. Um, but the vet is very, very happy with how Bonnie is recovering and so am I. I've done a lot of reading, <laughs> shock, and um, this is actually very common in ponies such as Welsh ponies or Arabs who have been bred to have those very distinguished, dishy, stupid, small skulls. Um, and it is a problem. Um, it's basically like how people breed, say, pugs to have really flat faces and um, it's all cosmetics and I don't know why people like to breed ponies with such silly dishy faces because it presents a whole lot of problems and a lot of that is overcrowding in the mouth, teeth not forming properly and this kind of stuff happening. And yeah, it's obviously been very stressful for me. Um, obviously not been overly pleasant for Bonnie either. If you were thinking, why did I leave it so long before um, obviously when the abscess presented itself to getting the tooth out, like obviously that was over a year, but I was literally following the vet's advice. Um, and she wasn't in pain, she didn't drop weight, she didn't, you know, she was fatter than ever last year. Yeah, I've, I've done everything that the vet has said and suggested. And now luckily I've got a happy pony and it means that hopefully soon I will be able to start thinking about um, getting a rider on her. And that obviously won't be me. <laughs> I mean, she's very pretty, isn't she? Hello, Bonsai. You're so pretty. Yes. And hey, presto, there you have it. A full horse update, apart from I haven't said about Zach. Zachy will be coming out with the bloodhounds with me tomorrow. He is feeling very, very well indeed. So, um, and that will be his probably penultimate. Um, outing of the season before he goes off on his holly bobs, e.g. goes out in the field. And the plan is, hopefully, that he can go out with Lara Lee um, and just chill. So guys, make sure you do stay tuned because, as you know, as I've said, um, Ember's eventing season kicks off next weekend. Ah! So I'm very excited um, and I have a feeling, I have a very good feeling about this year. So I'm going to carry forward this positive mental attitude to our event. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.